Hi, everyone. This is Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception Action Podcast again with another article review. This one is a follow-up to my last video in which I reviewed Norman's article in which he was proposing that we can kind of make peace between the information processing and ecological approach by mapping them on to the two streams in our visual system. So I did a review of that paper. And at the end of that review, I talked about, I mentioned this article I'm going to review today, which is another uh, paper uh, looking at, you know, can we, are these complementary? Can we can somehow uh, combine them? Can they both exist in the same space, right? So this is the idea here we're going to address in this paper. So the overall context, again, if, if you haven't, you know, is to just remind you is there's these two distinct theories uh, for skill acquisition, the information processing approach, the kind of traditional approach and the ecological approach. And as I said, I did a video where I tried to outline and explain these differences, you know, and I have this very strong view that these things are too completely incompatible, right? So that they can't be integrated and combined in any way. So again, I want to put that out front. That's my, my kind of bias in reviewing this article. This article is the, by three authors, Anson, Elliot, and Keith Davids, Greg Anson, Dick Elliott, and Keith Davids. You know, are these views divergent or complementary? So that's what they're gonna try to do. Information processing approach, they're gonna use constraints-based in, in lieu of in meaning ecological approach. And actually, it's a bit important, I'll talk about later on, that they chose those words. So, What's really interesting about this paper is it's what's, what we call in academia an adversarial collaboration, right? Because the authors have deliberately chosen to work together because they have differing viewpoints, right? As most people that listen to me will probably know, Keith Davids is obviously uh, an ecological, right? From the ecological approach, he's kind of the one of the persons that first talked about ecological dynamics, right? It's, it's mostly associated with him. Um, Digby Elliott is a researcher that's done a lot of re great research on motor control. Um, for example, if you go back to listen to my episode, podcast episode on intermittent vision, can't remember what number it is, but I talked a lot about his work. He's done work on catching and things, but he's very uh, information processing based, his ideas, talking about integrating uh, time, samples of time and things like that. He actually did, was one of the commentators on in the last article I read. And Greg Anson, I'm not um, as familiar with his work. Um, he, this is what he he claims he uh, holds a mechanistic neural system structure, right? So he's an information processing person as well, but more focused on I think on the, what the brain is doing, right? Dig Digby Elliott is a very much a behavioral scientist, right? Looking at performance, right? He doesn't really do much neuroscience. Uh, Anson, I think, does more, right? So that's kind of the these three are going to work together to try to explore can we find some common ground between these two distinct theories? And as I said in my last episode, you know, I understand the pull for trying to do this. A lot of people want to do this. Can we integrate these, combine these in some way instead of having such a distinction? And the authors raise, you know, um, they, they point out what I've been saying all along. You know, I, you know, when we present these things, typically, if you look in any textbook or on my video, we pre present these theories as not being complementary. Right, they're opposite, opposing views of skill acquisition. Okay, um, but they what they're going to raise um, is that the idea that in combination they could easily be perceived to form a complete whole by enhancing each other's characteristics. So they're putting forth the idea that you somehow can combine them, and by doing that, they give a more complete, better theory. Okay, so that's their idea. I'm going to talk about why they think this first and kind of the argument they're putting forth without trying to editorialize along the way, then I'm going to talk about my views at the end, right? So I'm going to try to give you just a, a factual uh, interpretation, my interpretation of their arguments, and then I'll, I'll evaluate them, what I think about them at the end. Right, so they're talking, another point they raised before I do that, and you know, um, they point out that people that support these different views tend to stick to them like they're super glue, uh, guilty as charged, right? So there's a lot of admiracy. And, and I said this, you know, a lot of the things I've done in the podcast recently, this is, you know, something that raises a lot of ire and discontent with people on social media and things with how tenacious sometimes people are and in, in so passionate about their view. Okay. So, so obviously that, that is uh, important to recognize. So 
What? Well, let's start with their ideas. So the first thing, a lot of this article is very much historical, right? And and what they're going to argue in the article is that the models that have can't come out and the, the the fact that they've kind of diverged and gone into kind of opposing views, the ecological and information processing approaches, is in large part historical, right? Because people didn't know the other people's theories in total detail. They didn't know existing things. People had different motivations at different times and so on. So that is kind of interesting. So the first thing they do, they talk about the motivations for the ecological approach. Why do those of us like me who started in an information processing background and were trained that way and did a bunch of research that way switch to the ecological approach? They raise three things, right? So one of them is that the information processing models and most of the research on it are not representative, right? And this is a common thing I've talked about on the podcast a lot. You know, a lot of the classic motor learning studies are very simple pointing tasks, pressing keys, uh, simple reaching, which seem to have little generalizability to the complex sports skills, right? So that's one point. The other point is that what motivated the ecological approach, and this particularly is what motivated Carl Newell to develop his model, is trying to better connect motor control, motor learning, and development in children, right? Before Carl Newell came along, uh, a lot of those things were re treated as very distinct, right? Learning a sports skill was a completely different thing than a kid learning how to walk, right? We never talked about those at the same time, right? So Newell wanted to connect those, right? So that's another motivation. And the third one, and that, um, you know, that they are going to kind of say is kind of dismiss actually in the article is that those many of us <laughs> believe that the ecological approach is just a better explanation, right? So it's not coming in here. It, the, its purpose was not to replace and, and correct certain deficits in the information processing approach. It was to completely replace it, right? The whole thing <laughs> and replace it with different ideas. Right. So those are the three things that they raise. Okay. Why hasn't there been integration? Right. Why hasn't why have they kind of diverged in history? And we're at this point where we're fighting, uh, you know, standing on two different uh, sides, different fields and are throwing bombs at each other. Um, they make uh, I, I would call it the, the Reese's peanut butter cup argument. Right. They're going to focus on two researchers representing the two different views. Uh, Paul Fitz, um, who. Um, has done the famous uh, Fitz and Posner model of skill acquisition, um, which I'm going to talk about for, for the information processing side, right? And Bernstein for the ecological approach, right? Which the people that watch my videos, I'm sure you know Bernstein. And the basic idea is that um, Fitz got chocolate in his peanut butter and Bernstein got peanut butter in his chocolate, right? Where chocolate and peanut butter are the two approaches. Basically, the idea is that um, we've kind of misunderstood Fitz's model, right? This is, again, the, the authors of this paper. And um, lack of recognition of some of the details of Fitz's model has led to it not recognizing that it addresses lots of the flaws that we were worried about in the ecological approach, right? So it's not purely information processing. It has some of the ecological ideas in it, the peanut butter chocolate metaphor. Um, and the same time, Bernstein got chocolate in his peanut butter. The idea is that a lot of us have picked and choose certain ideas we like from Bernstein, uh, like degrees of freedom problem, repetition without repetition. Yet we've ignored the fact that he was talking. He also talked a lot about some information processing ideas, like motor programming, uh, you know, hierarchical control, and, and things like that. Right. So that's their basic argument that kind of us not recognizing the completeness of these two uh, researchers' work has kind of led to this divergence. And if we maybe if we had have noticed this at the time, um, we would have been more complementary uh, theory or one overall theory. And maybe their point, they're trying to, obviously the goal with the paper now is maybe if they point this out now, we can get back to integrating and being complementary. So why do we need integration, right? In their view, uh, neither model is is complete, right? Is both of them are inadequate. Um, they fail to address the, all of the things I mentioned: motor learning, motor control, and motor development. Um, they both fail, in particular, the ecological approach fails to, uh, you know, to adequately explain the underlying neural biological processes, right? So that's their argument, right? And I'm not really 
going to debate that here, right? Uh, I don't want to debate the inadequacy of the model. I just want to, of course, every model has inadequacies, right? We need to make it better. I'm going to debate their proposed route to do, addressing these ad inadequacies. Okay? So that's why we need integration. That's some of the things going on. Okay, so let's first start with, so first we're going to start with FITS. Okay, so I think most people have, are familiar with FITS three-stage model of skill acquisition. You know, if you're not, I talked about it in episode 129. You'll see it in almost any skill motor learning textbook. The idea in FITS model is that we process through three stages when we learn a skill. We, the cognitive stage involves very high working memory and attentional demands where we're basically holding declarative knowledge. We're holding the steps for a skill in our, in our memory, working memory, and pulling them out as we need. So we're remembering what a coach told us. I bend my knees. Now I swing my arms. Now I do this. So because of that, we're very slow and inefficient. Okay. The next stage is the associative stage where we begin to link different um, movement patterns and different information, it's the big stimulus response. We kind of associate these to make, and we start to use what, instead of using declarative knowledge, factual knowledge, you use more procedural knowledge on how to do things. And then the last stage is, of course, the autonomous stage where the skill becomes automatic, where we don't need a lot of working memory. So you can see working memory demands are going low. We don't need a lot of tension and so on, right? So that's its basic idea. And I think most people are familiar with that. What they argue is that why this is this his model is complementary with the ecological approach, um, they argue pull out a few different points, right? Um, and things they, they claim like people have missed over the years. One of them is that they say that FITS model incorporates essentially, a, you know, one of the things in, in my overview I've had on the first slide, the differences between the ecological approach and the information processing approach is the linearity of the processes, right? In the information processing approach, typically things go in discrete steps, one after the other, whereas in ecological approach, we argue for more nonlinear processes. Um, they're arguing essentially um, Fitz's model is not just linear, right? He, he argued that essentially there was overlap, so these things could be uh, going on in parallel, and it's a discontinuous product, process, right? So Fitz's model has addresses the ecological concern of linearity, and okay? so that's what they're arguing. Another thing they say is that Fitz's model can be applied both to motor control and motor learning, right? Which is definitely true, right? It can explain uh, the different, you know, how people behave, right? Um, how people handle secondary tasks. It's been applied to understand the effects of pressure, right? So it can explain motor control, how we move, and it also obviously is a theory of learning. So it's a it's addressing Newell's main issue, right? That uh, separating learning and development and control and development, okay. They also point out that it addresses this um, limitation of representativeness because new, uh, Fitz actually developed it using not just simple tasks, right? He didn't just use laboratory tasks. He looked at pilots and a bunch of other things. Um, and this is true, of course. Fitz's model has been applied to sport. I've applied it in my research to golf and baseball. And right, so it's not just a description of a simple lab tasks. That's a fair uh, point. The other thing they raise is there's a lot of parallels, right? And I'm going to address these later on, but I'm just going to say what they, they said here, obviously, without editorializing. So, so Fitz talked about things like spatial temporal patterning, continuous act interaction between processes with, uh, and learning. You can basically, you can, these things sound a lot like some of the, the, the concepts in the constraints-based dynamical systems approach, right? Um, so the, you can talk about coordination patterns and attractor states and, and you know, things like that are, can map on to spatial temporal patterning, right? So they're, they're, they seem to be talking about the same things is the point they're raising, right? So there's a lot of parallels in the, in the concepts. Um, so, and then they give this quote, one can envision fit smiling as his cognitive, associative, and autonomous stages seem to map onto Newell et al.'s physiology coordination performance levels that are in turn associated with the dynamical systems properties of self-organization and pattern formation, convergence to attracting fixed points, and evolution of attractor landscape respectively. So ideas that, yes, there are, uh, Fitz's model is compatible with the ecological approach because you can map his three processes onto other the processes divine in the ecological approach. So that's the, the basic idea. 
The other thing they point out is that if you look at Newell's first drawing, right, as most people, many people will know, Newell has gone through several distinct different drawings for his constraints triangle, right? The very first one is this one from his 1986 chapter, which has the terms coordination and control as output. Those happen to be exactly what Fitz was talking about, right? So again, parallels in what in what they're describing. Right? So that's kind of so the bottom line is there's Fitz model does address some of the concerns that ecological psychologists had about traditional theories, and it also has lots of parallels to ecological theories, right? So that's their argument. Going to the other side you know, the peanut butter and chocolate, from the chocolate to the peanut butter. Why are Bernstein's ideas complementary with an information processing approach? So most people are, if you read this, this you, you'll notice that Bernstein um, talked about programs, motor programs at the same time as organism environment relationships, right? So it seems to be talking about Schmidt's motor programs and perception action coupling at the same time. Um, Bernstein talks about, you know, his concepts of exercisability and dexterity seem to suggest both kind of a traditional view of cognitive uh, learning the fundamentals, repeatability, along with uh, adaptability, uh, degeneracy at the same time. And he talked a lot about higher and lower uh, levels of the nervous system interacting in kind of both top down and bottom up patterns. Okay, so Bernstein had a lot of ideas that seem to re reflecting on both approaches, okay? And you, if you're interested, I, I did a three-part series on Bernstein on the podcast starting with episode 93. Okay, so that's their, their argument from the Bernstein side of things. Again, showing lots of parallels and, and par apparent things that are complementary, okay? So in their total summary of the article, they, ar they argue information and constraints-based potion are often described as independent no uh, notions, independent theories, but they're trying to explain the same thing, right? Agreed. <laughs> um, alternative, so um, what they're arguing in the next paragraph, they're essentially saying there's basically two motivations for why we came up with the ecological approach. Again, going back to what I mentioned earlier, one of the dominant ones is that, that it came forth as a replacement. Um, the other one, in a different vein, a constraints-based approach could have been proposed because of the perceived limitations of information processing, um, particular representativeness, right? They believe that the main motivation of people adopting the ecological approach was the latter, right? And so it's the reason we dropped the ecological approach is because some of these limitations. Fitz model addresses some of these limitations already, so they're complementary. And the last page, last in our view, had information processing and skill acquisition included representation by, for example, Fitz three stage model. The often antagonistic debate would have perhaps been muted. Close inspection reveals that Fitz models accommodates both laboratory simulation and real world movement tasks in seeking to explain coordination, control, and acquisition of skills. So bottom line, um, Fitz model is much more representative than we thought. Like it covers representative design principles much more than we thought. So it's, there shouldn't be this antagonism, right? If we realize that, we'll notice that there's more in, in similar between these two approaches than there are different. Okay, so that's the basic summary. Now I want to go into my interpretation, right? And why I think this argument of the model, these arguments are put forward that these two things are complementary is inherently flawed, right? Why I think I don't agree with this, a lot of this. The first point is that their, their idea of what motivates people to adopt the ecological approach, right? And now to cons I can say this from my perspective. As I said, I started information processing ideas in my research and my thinking, and I switched to more ecological approach. I've also talked to tons of coaches that have done this in their practice design, switch from traditional pro pro coaching to more ecological approaching. And their view of what motivates this kind of switch and the motivation for why we want an ecological approach is far too narrow in my view, right? It's not just about addressing a few little problems like the representativeness, the linearity and nonlinearity, connecting learning and motor control, right? Those are all parts of it. But as I saw, I think in my first slide where I showed all those differences, there's way more to it than that. An ecological approach is not an attempt to add on and correct a few flaws about information processing approach. 
it is a completely different worldview, right? Everything about the way you look at things changes, right? So in their quote I mentioned a few minutes ago in the summary, they had it right the first time, right? Ecological approach is a replacement for information processing, right? It's not a tweak to it. It's not an adjustment to it, right? It's a re complete replacement as a preferred way of explaining everything, not just a tackling representativeness, right? So I don't agree with that assessment at all. Okay, so that's one problem. The Another issue is when they're talking about complementary and they highlight all those parallels with fits, I think they, you know, they're, of course there are, but they're missing, they're not really pulling out what exactly is complementary in those, those discussions, right? In my view, and when you look at these things carefully, what's complementary about FITS model, information processing approach, schema theory, on the one hand, and ecological approach on the other hand, is the problems they're trying to answer, right? The problems they're addressing, the questions they're answering, the phenomenon we're trying to explain, motor control, skill, expertise, right? So those are what's complementary. The actual answers to those and how we solve those problems are completely different and incompatible, right? So yes, they're of course complementary and parallel because they're models of the same thing, right? There's going to be words that sound the same. Of course, there's going to be coordination in both models because both of them are trying to explain that. But how we're explaining coordination is not complementary at all, right? So let me give you some examples. In the FITS model, of course, we talk about associative stage, we talk about autonomous stage, we talk about working memory, declarative knowledge. As I described in a recent episode of the podcast, number 326, those concepts have no meaning in the ecological approach. But being autonomy automatic has no meaning, right? And this idea that the association stage where you're developing stimulus response pairings and, and things is not the same as coupling in Gibson view, right? Associations are uh, learning abstract relationships. Coupling are picking up specifying information. You don't need to learn to pair things that are otherwise not connected, right? Coupling is pairing two things that are, in a way, meant to be together because they're telling you what you need. Um, other things he talks about, you know, these are all quotes directly from this paper, right? They're not me. They talk about uh, skill acquisition and fits models dependent on intellectual activity uh, ability, and you can predict it from intellectual tests. That's not an idea compatible with ecological. They talk about in the fixation stage, there's correct movement patterns. There's no such thing as a correct movement pattern in the ecological approach. Um, they it fits. They talk about fits. How fits? A lot of his thinking was shaped by the development of computers at the time he was, uh, you know, doing his research and, and thinking and writing, and so he applied a comp computer analogy where we talk about storage and subroutines and, and memory. Again, not not compatible with ecological approach. Completely different ideas, right? Um, the is notable that fits viewed variability of movement outputs as noise. That's opposite, again, to the ecological approach, right? And this idea that you could see fit smiling because you can map uh, things like um, attractor states, um, you know, self-organization and things onto his uh, cognitive associative atomic stage is, is not, I don't think he would be smiling because those are replacements for his ideas, right? They're basically saying his idea is wrong, right? There is nothing similar between self-organization and the cognitive stage other than the things they're trying to explain, right? There's nothing similar between an attractor and an association other than the thing they're trying to explain. They're explaining things in different ways, right? The fact that in dynamical systems we propose these different things is saying that Fitz was wrong, that we don't agree with Fitz, right? I don't think that would make him smile, but maybe, not, you know, um, maybe I'm wrong. So again, the, the compatibility is not there, right? In terms of the fits the Newell model, right? There's a reason that Newell keeps doing different versions of his diagram, right? He's emphasizing that what goes on in that out of that triangle, what he's trying to emphasize that self-organization process, exploration of the perceptual motor landscape, coupling. Yes, it leads to coordination control, just like fits, 
but in completely different ways, completely different processes involved, not work, working memory and shift from declarative to proceduralized knowledge, completely different ways that it comes to that output. So the outputs are the same, yes, but the processes are different. How about, um, so in some, they, they, they make this, uh, uh, they have this in this is a quote from the article that I don't know why ha, doesn't seem to jibe with the rest of their argument, but it's consistent with what I'm saying right here. While there are naturally more similarities than differences in the products described by Fitt's three stage model and Newell's constraints model, the dual explanations of the process are short of being complementary. They're models of the same thing, they're trying to explain the same things in different co incompatible ways. Okay. Okay, so that's with fits, right? The fits argument. The Bernstein argument, right? What I'd like to point out is maybe, you know, uh, some people would you know not like to hear this, but Bernstein's word is not gospel in motor learning, right? Um, the ecological approach is amalgamation of some of Bernstein's ideas, some of Gibson's ideas, some of Newell's ideas, some of Calc, right? It's not, we don't take, in any field, you don't take everything a researcher ever said, ever said as gospel, right? Of course, Bernstein talked about some ideas of motor programs and, and top-down control and because that's where he started. Just It's very similar to my, I think, um, evolution, not that I compare myself to Bernstein in any way, um, that I, I, that's what I learned, right? That's where I started. So of course I thought about some of those ideas. If you look at my early papers, I talk about uh, automaticity. Rep I, I think I use the word representation somewhere, right? Um, and, and, and so, Yes, he has those ideas, but in no way does he have an integrative model of motor programs and self-organization, right? So just because Bernstein talked about something and says something doesn't mean it's part of the ecological approach or it negates the inter-ecological approach, right? That's kind of a misleading, you know, Bern uh, Bernstein's not the mayor of motor control town, right? Uh, he's very hugely influential, but not everything he says. We, Of course, we can pick and choose ideas that are consistent with when we're developing a new theory. We do that all the time. Um, and the other last point I would raise is that addressing the inadequacies in the approach. Okay, sure, there, there are inadequacies, inadequacies in the ecological approach. As I said, admit that. I won't argue about, won't want to argue about what they are. But in my opinion, the route to addressing these is not through integration. It's through focusing on developing the individual theories, right? Better expanding on them, applying them to different things, right? Um, in their paper, they put forth this kind of strange idea that, you know, one path to addressing these adequacies is integrating some of like the constraints ideas with some of the work of people like Daniel Wolport, who has really um, detailed models of motor control that are more connected with brain activity and so on. Um, and so this quote, one, whether emerging models of Wolpert and colleagues lead us back to the future, future meaning we're complementary again. But look at the description of this, right? Look at the description of Wolpert's models. Internal models transformation performed by neural include forward predictor and inverse controller, predict, predict internal transformation, not compatible, like how does that fit with an ecological, how is that gonna make an ecological approach address inadequacies? It's gonna make it not an ecological approach anymore, right? So again, I don't see how these are compatible. The ecological approach is the essentially the rejection of representation, right? It's a representation-free approach, right? Adding in a representation means it's not ecological anymore, right? So I, you can't combine them. So in some, you know, as I said, while I really like this effort and um, as adversarial co collaboration is great, I know it's something that a lot of people on social media say, you know, they wish there was more of on our podcasts and things. I, and I do think it's a great idea. But uh, as I said uh, in the last video, I'm kind of let down by this one. Um, I don't think it really accomplishes what it set out. And it doesn't address, like I said, it doesn't address the main issues. It doesn't address the fact that the definition of information is different in information processing and ecological. It doesn't address the fact that uh, ecological is non-representational and information processing is, right? If you really want to have an integrative complementary view, you have to explain to me how you can combine those two ideas together. 
So in, to summarize, sum up, you know, in answering their question, are these views divergent or complementary? As I said, they're complementary in the questions they're answering, but they're completely divergent and incompatible in the answers to those questions. So that's my, my view on that. So thanks again for joining me and cheers for now.